Yes. Hello world. It's us. Welcome everyone, this is part one of a three-part mini-series I am doing that is going to discuss the Accelerators card game from a competitive standpoint. Because obviously this game has only had one set um, and there is a lot to be examined with the game but you can pretty much solve everything from the start and this still does have a community of people playing it through Tabletop Simulator uh, which is available on Steam and often goes on sale. I'd highly just I'd highly suggest picking it up, even in Beyond Accelerators, it does have a lot of utility and there's a lot of things you can do with it. You can play any card game on it, uh, everything's been uploaded, you can create your own board games and card games on here. It's fantastic, especially if you are looking to test things, uh, but the community of people that play the Accelerators card game use this for their tournaments. Um, that way you don't have to be in person and it's just a very good and functional application. Um, so. You're probably wondering, you know, how does this work? How does this game work? And it looks complex. Fortunately, Mattel actually still has the instructions for this game on their website. All the instructions are still there. If you want to learn the game, you can. Now, I know it seems like a lot of text, but there's not a lot you really need. Um, this page here, you really don't need the object. You know... You know what you're doing. You know you're trying to win. You just need to know the rules, really. Um, it is a 40-card deck, I believe. Uh, I'll have to double-check that. Um, fortunately, we can double-check that just through... Yeah, 40-card deck. Uh, mine's 42 because I do also have uh, the these cards, the realms. Realms don't count to your 40 card deck. We will look at my deck later on once we have had a look at everything and we'll be able to go through that. But for now, let's go through these. Um, so the types of cards, obviously you're going to need these. Um, but the best thing about this is if you just put the rule book up while you're playing, especially if you've got two monitors like I do, I always, even though I know most of the rules of this game, I have this up on my second screen and this tells me anything I need to know at the time. Um, turn sequence is always very important to have up because this is the thing you'll use the most. Um, the rest of it all makes sense very quickly and you just gotta match icons and numbers. Yay! Basic math! Um, you can have... Yeah, okay. This is crazy. 80 cards in your deck? You can have an 80 card deck, oh, that's disgusting. Um, do not have an 80 card deck, people. But I'm not gonna sit here reading rules that I didn't know about, I didn't know it was an 80 card deck because with all card games, you should be playing a minimum amount, which is 40. Um, and it, I'm just getting ready to see a rule that says that it's not 40. Um, it's like, oh, it's 50 cards. You've been cheating every time you've played this. No, it is. it's got to be 40. Yep, yeah, it says here 40. But I want to go through this um, from a uh, competitive card game standpoint. I've played competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! and Final Fantasy TCG, both. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! I've been at a relatively decent level. Um, I've gone to a lot of events and performed average <laughs> I don't really top but Final Fantasy TCG um, I topped most events that I entered uh, and was very good at the game and I also got experience with Pokemon and Magic and there are a few rules to all these card games and DB Super there's a few rules to all these card games that stand out and they all translate into this game um, so all the standard things that you know from any other card game you play will translate into this. Things like drawing cards is good. Okay, it doesn't matter what card game you're playing, drawing cards is good. I think except for exploding kittens. <laughs> but any deck building card game. Alright, let's go through the cards first because look, there's a lot of cards, right? There is, I believe, uh, 20 cards per team. Uh, plus these three additional ones that I will get into a bit later, but I personally don't know about those um, and can't give you good information. But let's go through in order, Teku, yada yada, let's go. Alright, first up we have the Teku cards, and there's a lot of numbers and a lot of icons, and it's 
it looks very confusing and I promise you it's not as confusing as it seems. Um, the cars are probably the last thing you should be selecting. So it's a bit bogus that I'm going through them first. Anyway, we're going to help you really round down your choices for cars. There are two things that matter for cars. It is the numbers and the abilities. Everything else is bonus or irrelevant, okay? Um, at the highest level of this game, those are the only two things that matter. So if we look, every car has two versions. Uh, so we've got battle spec, hyper battle spec. Um, and then we've got baseline, hyper baseline, drift tech, hyper drift tech. Really complex. Speaking of drift tech, the drift tech giveaway is still happening. Get me to 1,000 subs, and this will be going to one subscriber to this channel. Uh, probably two, because I do have a second drift tech, and I'm thinking about just also throwing that one in. Um, but, you know, play as it goes, I guess. Anyways, back to this. Uh, so, you understand that we have a hyper version and a non hyper version of each car, and the difference between them is so minimal, it's laughable. In almost every single one of these, it is one stat is higher. So we've got a 423, 433, 432, 433, 444, 453. It's just so basic, okay? Um, in the case of some cars, such as Hyper Battle Spec, it also has a track that it's better on. Uh, Synchro gains an extra track that it's better on. These things don't matter. Oh, it also has an extra icon up here. Guess what? They don't matter. Um, these icons matter so little in the long run of the game that if you're building your deck around these things, you're probably not going to be the best player in whatever event you're doing. Unless everyone else is also building around these icons. Um, all these icons are very unimportant. These ones here, like these slimes and roads and everything else, these are only important for your realm which you pick based on your cars, you don't pick your cars based on your realm. So these are irrelevant. The only difference here is in the case of two cars with the same stat, one of them has one of these and one of them doesn't, that's better. The more of these you have, the better, but that's per individual car. Don't just load up your deck with these. But let's go through overall the stats. The first thing you wanna do is add up each car, right? So you got, nine ten uh what we're going to do is we're going to rotate everyone on the side if it is below ten uh nine ten ten eleven this is thirteen fourteen fourteen's nice uh definitely remember that uh that's another that's a fifteen a fourteen that is a twelve uh thirteen 14. Fortunately, it's easy to get the second one. These cars are a little different. This bottom row, the high voltages and uh, spectites have a slightly different thing. Fortunately, it's the worst car in each category that has these. These are the only times that your stats won't matter, but we will look at that shortly. Uh, and this is 12 and 13. I suck at maths. It is 11 and 12. Um, so we'll also rotate these tens, right? So if you like Teku, these cars all equal 10. You know what you do with these cars that equal 10 or less? Well, gone. They don't exist. Um, there is no situation where you should be running a car that pathetic. <laughs> um, even the 11 is pushing it. Um, and honestly, once you've determined how many cars of each thing you want, just eliminate everything with the lowest number, the lowest total number. The number does not matter that much. <laughs> okay, so it's your lowest total number gone until you're playing whatever amount of cars it is um i'm trying to remember what they suggested just a moment i think the recommendation for this is that you play about 12 cars uh, i think that's what i was told um because you do want to see them without having to mulligan you want to see them consistently enough to be playing a car every turn but you don't want to see them too often either, like so that you're not drawing anything else. So you don't want to always see a car, but you also want to play one every turn. Getting that consistency is a bit weird. I personally play 13. That is the number I go with. Um, but 
that's because I run three teams. Um, most people will only play two teams, um, and some will even play four. Generally, the more teams you've got, the more you want, just so you're seeing more of the same team where you can. Um, you do want two of each team that you are playing on in play at a time. But that's for later. Uh, once you understand the rules of the game, or once we go through a deck, we'll understand how that works. Now, these bottom cards here I do want to also talk about. Uh, these all have an ability, which unfortunately we have to zoom in to see because they got added, rotated by Tabletop Sim or by whoever made it. Now, so when this vehicle is brought into play, you return a mod with any number listed in its speed window from your junk pile to your hand. Now, this is bad. Uh, so this card requires something in the speed window, which is SPP, so Speed Power Performance, which means you can only bring in a mod to your hand from your junk pile with a number in this column. So that there just is too inconsistent. Uh, this version is better stats and just says one mod from your junk pile. doesn't matter what type of mod it is. This is just worse in every way, shape and form. So we just get rid of it. It's not even worth the trouble. Uh, this one, when advanced to the second realm, high voltage retains any shift cards or this vehicle never discards shift cards when advanced into a new realm. So we just get rid of it. That effect applies one time. This effect always applies. These cars are good for this effect. The other versions are bad for their effect because their effect is so situational. So already we've cut down to 13 Teku cars. You can cut this number much lower just by getting rid of the next lowest until you have however many you want. If you want to play exclusively Teku, then there you go. There's your 13 car lineup. You get rid of, I think it's this one, it's the next lowest um, if you want to cut it to 12. Boom, done. Um, however, You shouldn't be playing one team. You should always play a minimum of two. I highly recommend three. I personally like three, but the standard that most people go by, the community goes by, is two teams. Uh, in which case, you get rid of the next few lowest ones, which are, you know, we get rid of this and this, because these are 12s, I think. Um, getting rid of 12s is fine. I think this is an 11, isn't it? Boom. So we've got far less cars now. We've really cut down on that number. Um, and we have just nine cars here, um, which again is still extra cars. Get rid of some more. It's a pretty simple system. The big numbers win. Big numbers, that's all you need. This isn't like other card games where big attack points equals higher cost. There's no cost to these cards. There is no disadvantage to playing this over this. It's just bigger numbers. That's all that matters is the big numbers. The only time that playing low numbers is an advantage is these two cars, and there is two cars exactly like this in every category, and they are generally the ugliest two cars. All right, well now we move on to the Metal Maniacs, and it's the same sort of principle. All the rules that we put in for Teku are exactly the same. Let's have a look first at our two special cards here. We have four special cards. Uh, when Hollowback is brought into play, return a mod from your junk pile to your hand. Um, now this one however costs action points to return the mods to hand i personally believe that this one a free mod is exactly the same as this a free mod free mod uh, and every single team has one that brings back mods this one costs action points to do it's just not worth it giving up action points for an effect that you otherwise have for free yeah sure you can get two or three or even five mods back but then you've got no action points for the turn. This is so much better because it's just free. I personally, you, look, if you find use for this car, go ahead, play it. I don't, I don't see use. So I get rid of it. Uh, out of these two, these two can transfer uh, mods from themselves to another car. And I believe it is exactly, oh, it's not exactly the same. This one says mod ability rules do not apply. This one says mod ability rules apply. So we just get rid of that, it's garbage. Uh, you don't want too many of these weak cars that just have abilities that are cool, but you do want two per team, generally. Sometimes more. Like, you don't want every car to do it, but you do want to play these cars where you can. Generally, one of each type 
is fine. Um, so I play two per team, um, and then one extra, I think, is off team. We'll go through here. All right, so we're going to quickly go into here, and we're just going to grab all these things that are 11 or lower. So one, two, three, four. Uh, I believe that's five, six. Okay, so we're just going to put these all together. Good job, guys. Thank you for being garbage. All right, we've immediately just cut out most of the cars for this team because those were all 11 or lower. As you'll see, this entire side, we just took out the entire metal there. Um, these are all 12s, which is still not great. 12 is probably as low as you want it to get. Um, those cars that have 11 or less should just not have been printed. They don't do anything. There is no advantage to those cars. So here, again, you want your big numbers. These three are your biggest three, I believe. Uh, these are just your best cars for the Metal Maniacs. They are absolutely insane. Um, and they're small, their weaker versions are also really good. And you almost pretty much could get rid of these 12s too. We, like, if you want an extra one, just grab one of these. Probably one of these two. Uh, this is particularly the most common road that'll show up. Uh, this does have the extra mod thing, but it's just, it doesn't come up enough. This is just garbage. Get rid of this. Uh, and this is, this is fine. It's on par with these. Um, but look, this is insane. This card is nuts. Every team has one nuts card. Uh, we'll go on to the silences here. Now, this lets you have up to eight cards in your hand. This lets you have up to nine cards in your hand. Uh, there is absolutely minimal difference between having eight cards and nine cards. There's no point playing them both, and this one has worse stats. Boom. Why would you not just play this over that? Uh, and here... Mod from junk pile to hand, mod with any number listed in performance to hand. Nah, I don't want to remember which P is performance and which one is power. So just get rid of it. Just get rid of, I don't, this is better. <laughs> it has slightly better stats and it doesn't care what the stats of the card it brings back are. It's just superior. And again, we're gonna get rid of our cards that are, or our cars, person, sorry that are 11 or less. So boom, 11, 11, 11. That's 10. <laughs> um, 245 is 12. 336, that's nuts. That six in that row is huge. I think that's all of them. 11. <laughs> Uh, okay, and then we can probably just get rid of the 12s too, but we'll do that. That's up to you. Again, it depends how many of each car, like each team you're playing. So I do want to keep it as open as possible. But really, just the biggest number is the best number. 14. Good number. 13. Good number. Uh, th I think Teku has like a 15, uh, which would be Synchro. Yeah, 15 on Synchro, which is probably the highest any car gets to. Um, so there you go, there's your silences. I'll probably get rid of the 12s before I do the next video too. Now, now we go into the drones and we go again. A hazard, this lets you bring back a hazard or this lets you bring back two hazards. And this one has a higher stat and an extra little thing here. I'm gonna let you tell me which one of these two cars you think is better? The one that brings back one hazard or the one that is two stats better and brings back two hazards? It's quite simple. We just get rid of this. Look, you can play them both. If you're playing a hazard deck, play them both. I highly suggest playing them both in that situation. Um, but later on, we're going to actually probably delete this too. But we'll get to that later. And then this, oh, any mod with a power or any mod. Like, why? Why have the exact same car twice, but one is just significantly worse? And then we get rid of these silly things that are 10 or less. Uh, well, 11 or less, I think I said. What's three, three, and five, 11? Why?
burn stats suck. <laughs> Look at that, I've already eliminated most of the drones just by getting rid of the 11 or less. Um, this one hits a 15, that's not too bad. Um, so there you go, drones have a 15 as well. And it's on the coolest drone. That's the cars guys, that's nice, quick and easy. We've gone through the cars. Um, I will obviously, you know, that eliminates a lot. Now also I will mention these, uh, the Ratified 2, Flathead Fury 2 and Battle Spec 2. These cars are identical to their V2s, all right? There is no difference to them. Heck, we didn't even keep Battle Spec V2, so boom, or the torqued or the whatever. Um, there's realistically no difference to them. Oh, this is slightly better. It has an extra thing here that I've already said is redundant, um, which I, I don't even know if these are real or fair made. I don't know what the deal is. I don't care what the deal is. They're not worth it. They're not worth playing. Uh, even these two are pushing it as 12s I, I personally wouldn't play 12s not for deck, not for metal maniacs anyway you got six seven eight great cards here you just don't need these so after going through everything we have 15s 13s 14s and then 14s 13s 14s 13s and then 15 14 13 uh, and then obviously you've got your little extra cars down here which have special abilities. These are obviously worth playing regardless of their stats. Um, their stats really do not matter. There is not a single thing, a single time where they will matter. Uh, except maybe in the case of, is it this one? No, whichever one keeps its mods. I think it's, one of them does. I think it's Spectite. Spectite keeps its mods. This one, sorry. Uh, high voltage keeps its shifts, sorry. So it'll always keep its shifts um, and just it gets really beefy quickly because shifts are generally cheap for the fact that they discard every time you leave a realm. Um, everything else gets back mods um, and I personally do recommend playing the three mod grabbing, or the four mod grabbing cards regardless, okay? I don't care what team you're on, you should be playing all three, all four of these. If you're playing just these two, just Maniacs and Teku, play all four. There is no reason not to. These cards are insane um, because getting back mods is hugely essential to this game. Uh, obviously, I've cut down Teku and Silences to five cards, but again, if you're only playing 12, that's easy to do. Even five could be too much. You could easily play these at four apiece uh, with your two specials. Your two specials are not quite essential, but very good. If you're not playing hazards, don't bother with this. If your hand size doesn't matter, don't bother with this, uh, which it can, it can matter. Um, this is pretty bad. Moving mods doesn't come up that often, but it's not terrible either. Um, this is, uh, this is nuts as well. Keeping, keeping mods definitely comes up, or well, keeping shifts, but moving mods doesn't come up very often. Um, but feel free to play it if you want. Uh, that's cars. 